So when you're fishing an unfamiliar body of water for the first time, what do you do first? Uh, well, I fish my strengths, you know. I look at the time of the year. If it's uh, cold or something, I'll take an old spinnerbait or rattle trap and go beat down the banks. Or if it's got grass in it, I'll, I'll go to the area of the lake that looks like it might have grass. If it don't, then you know, I'll start shallow almost all the time and then work my way up you know, with the fish. I don't know Do you spend it. a lot of time running around? With yeah, the first day normally I will. So. Do you find yourself plastered to the GPS and to the depth finder more so, or uh, is it yeah. find a spot and fish it hard, or what do you do? Yeah, you just uh, mix it up, you know, you want to you want to look at everything you can and try to find the area that you like the best. Uh, fish. Uh, find the areas you like the best and, you know, try to make them bite with what you like to fish with. Have you ever tried using fluorocarbon with topwater baits? Nope, I'm not a fan of, I like fluorocarbon, but I will not use it with, with topwater. It's a, uh, it is a no-no. And why is that? Sinks, just, uh, you know, I've always grown up throwing it with mono or braid and, uh, it's got more confidence in it. It keeps the bait up. And with fluorocarbon, it just sinks. It's no good. Just a no good. So how do you prepare physically for a long tournament? Well, you, you know, when you're on the road, you eat right or try to. Subway or, you know, a salad or fish. Anything like that. You don't want to be jamming yourself up, loading yourself with too much fats before the before a tournament, because you got, you know, sometimes it's three weeks and sometimes it's a month or a month and a half, and you got to be able to go go hard the whole time, because your competitors will. They won't cut you no slack. And, uh, Do you have any kind of exercise regimen you you adhere to? No, not I don't. Uh, Sometimes when I'm home, I get on a little deal and then I get off as quick as I get on it. But you just want to stay, you know, stay, stay ready. You got to be, you got to be ready. These guys here, a lot of them exercise, a lot of them do stuff before tournaments. And you know, you can't, you can't compete against them kind of guys in a long-term deal if you're not ready when it's a fast moving bite or if it's a slow moving bite or whatever and you know you've got to be got to be on your a game one of the guys on our forums wants to know your thoughts on on pre-fishing on a tournament would you rather have one more day or would you rather not have pre-fishing at all uh, I like it the way it is. Two and a half days is plenty. It gives the guys, you know, gives you enough time to look at what you need to look at and not get greedy with anything. And you can eliminate a lot with two and a half days. Uh, can't really, you can pinpoint them with two and a half days also. So it's, it's, uh, I think two and a half just about right. So what do you do during a tournament if your game plan isn't panning out the way you desired? Uh, you know, usually it's jump ship. Go to the other end of the lake. Uh, you know, don't fish for little fish. But, you know, if, if you, your first day, you know, if, eight, if 25 pounds won the week before and you got eight pounds in the box, you and the weather's probably pretty much the same, you know you're in trouble, so. Uh, 
you know, you need to go to a different area or different grass flat or just mix up your whole strategy and go somewhere new and just try it. A lot of times some of my better stringers have come just going blind, running new water and, you know, fishing the way I like to fish. So you'd rather change location first than change yeah, little definitely. color or anything like that. Yeah, I like a whole brand new start if it's if everything's going to pot on me. So Bobby, could you give the weekend angler an honest viewpoint of what being a professional angler is all about? After you catch this fish. Now do what? <laughs> Can you give the uh, the weekend angler uh, an honest viewpoint of what being a professional angler is all about? Oh, yeah. Being a professional angler holds its, uh, you know, it's a, you definitely earn it. It ain't something you just tattooed with the minute you, you're born. You, uh, it's something that I've worked for. It wasn't given. You know, I wasn't born with a with a silver spoon by no means at all. Um, a lot of heart, dedication, being away from your what from your family for sure. Uh, but there's enjoyment and competitiveness. It's you know, it's got all the all the fun things if you if you love to fish. This just adds about 10, 15 times more to it. It's something that's, uh, you know, whether I do good in this Bassmaster Classic or not, I, you know, I, I made it here and that's, a, that's the first thing. And, uh, you know, it's something that not everybody can say they can do. Everybody can not be a professional football player, basketball player, or golfer, but there's a lot a lot to say when you when you can say you're a professional fisherman. I mean, there's millions of people out there trying to become what we do, and either we're dumb enough to do it, or we just actually, you know, do well enough to, to keep at it. So it's uh, something you strive to get better at. It's a weird game. You never can learn enough about this this fishing. There's always something more to learn. Um, about bass fishing. Just when you think you got it all, you that was a pretty good fish there. You get your butt kicked, so I uh, you know, I love what I do for a living. I'd never change it. It's uh, it's a thrill when you catch them, it's a rush, it's a, you know, the excitement that you can ex pour out is next to none. You nobody else can can take that away from you for sure. And when you when you have a good day or you have a good tournament, you know, it's something you'll remember forever. When you finally win your first tournament like I did in 2009, it's something that I'll, I'll remember for the rest of my life. It's just, it was an awesome deal. It's, you know, something I've strived for my whole life and I finally conquered it. And then, you know, next is to win one of these tournaments and the next would be to win a Bassmaster Classic or uh, win Angler of the Year. So. There's a, uh, you know, a whole lot to do, and it's a, it's just something that I think it's every angler should should give it a shot if that's really what they want to do. There's no, you there's no, uh, I don't think you can be demand demand or whatever the word I'm looking for is for saying you went and tried to do something that you really wanted to do. It's. Uh, it's a little special place in my heart always, and my grandfather gave to me, and then he passed away, and now my dad, he carries it on. So, you know, it's neat that when your dad calls every morning at five, six o'clock on the way to the tournament. If, if you had your worst day or your best day, he'll still call you and, and wish you the best of luck. So, you know, when you got family behind you and support and uh, fans and everything else, then you know, you're living a dream is basically what it comes down to. Well, how did you get your start? Oh, basically, my younger brother Chris fished uh, 
BFLs years ago. Uh, started out at the regional fishing BFLs and he made the regional his first year and I felt like me and him and Arnie were all competitive uh, at bass fishing. And uh, I said, you know what, I'm gonna give that a try. And I went to the BFL, the regional and, regional and straight to the All-American. I did that uh, two years in a row. And then I qualified through the strand for the FLW and fished there for three years and qualified for the Bassmaster Classic in the Elite Series in 2008 or seven. Seven, I guess, and uh, swapped over, you know, was Rookie of the Year in 2008 and Rookie of the Year in FLW, and all that came from, you know, not phone calls and information. It came from putting my heart into it and everything I had, saying I'm gonna go out there and do this because this is what I want to do, and, you know, when the big fish bite, you put them in the boat, and when the when it's your time to catch them or a lake you go to, you, you expect to do well, you, you, you want to do well and get your name out there and speak with sponsors and get with the right company and, you know, let them know you're interested and you're a, a marketable angler and uh, they'll work with you, you know, if there's something they don't like or whatever, they'll tell you about that. But, you know, just basically I've stuck with it and through thick and thin, and this is where I'm at today. Well, what would you say is your your one defining moment where you said, you know, this, this is it, I've, I can do this for a living? Uh, I used to own a lawn service back in the younger days, and uh, I fished more than I was working. I had a couple of guys working for me when I was out of town, and I got a call from my dad one morning and told me that a guy had run over a couple of doormats at a church we used to mow, and was messing up some other properties and uh, I said you know what it's time for me to make a decision either I'm gonna be a lawn boy the rest of my life or I'm gonna go out and try to do this fishing business and it took me about three seconds to make that decision I got back home after a second or third place somewhere making some real good money and sold my lawn business and started up the fishing career So you, you owe your career to some ruined mats. You got it, buddy. <laughs> now I love to ruin mats with my flipping stick. <laughs> you know, Bobby, with so many guys competing now wanting to make their way up and be a pro, it's hard to win a tournament. So how does a guy know when he's ready to step up to the next level if he hasn't won a tournament yet? Well, that's a pretty good question. Uh, you know, winning, it's all about winning, of course. Everybody wants to win, but boy, it just don't happen very often. I think once you, uh, once you get your name out there and get in the top five, top 10, you know, in more than a, a few events where you're, when your name's up there, more than not up there. I think that's when you know you're ready. If it's, I think winning just kind of comes with putting yourself in the position enough times to, you know, win a tournament, and eventually it will happen. I don't think, uh, I don't think you have to be ready. You have to win a tournament to join a bass federation or a open or an elite tournament, you know, or a classic. None of that. I think you you have to prove to yourself and you know, to other people that you can, you're, you, you know, you're not in this just because you qualified for, you know, two tournaments throughout the year or something like that. I think it goes a little further than that. Mm -hmm. It's not quite the size we're after. Healthy. What would you say is the biggest misconception about pro anglers? Uh, that they have everything taken care of, you know. Oh, you get all this for free, or you this or that. You know, I get tired of hearing that. Come on, man, come off of this. You know, we get, 
we earned what we got, and it's it's uh, you know people think that that uh, we just make a ton of ton of money doing all kinds of things, and that ain't the way it goes. Maybe they're moving up here. Not a big one by no means. Look like a male. But uh, that's the biggest complaint. I, you know, people always, oh, there was another one, hit it. There's another one that hit it. There, he got it that time. Come on, show me a big one. <laughs> Look at the guts on these things. They're not big. I'm gonna keep firing out there until I see a good one. Fun though. No kidding. Look at that one. that. Oh, oh, oh. That's a little more like it, isn't it? What's that fish weigh, maybe? Three and three quarter? Yeah, maybe a little more than that. You think? Yeah. Well, we're done here, too. Well, it's the end of the day and what a day it was. You know, we made that long run to Venice today and uh, learned how to get there and how to get back, learned both routes. Uh, it was fun. I enjoyed your guys' questions today and look forward to uh, answering the rest of them right after this Bassmaster Classic. I'll catch you then. <laughs>